Welcome to the Guitar Manifesto channel. Today we're going to be assembling this Gear for Music Seattle Jazz Jazzmaster kick guitar. So first of all, I did a video with this the other day, come with an untreated body, I put a link in the description and in the corner above to see that video to show you what comes with the kit. Yeah, again it come untreated, so before I could even start building the guitar, I needed to paint the body and paint the headstock and shape it. So for the paint job, this was again an untreated wood finish, had a nice wood grain on it, so I thought I'll keep that wood grain incorporated into the finish of the guitar so you can see it through the paintwork there I actually think that looks pretty damn sweet I've gone for this like metallic sparkle finish what we use for it um, I sanded the guitar down just give it a, a bit of a key and then I put this filler primer on again I didn't want to fill the wood grain if you want a super smooth finish get some wood grain filler smooth it all out sand it you know keep going over it so you get it super smooth but for me I quite like the wood grain on it so I went over this filler primer just to fill up some of the pores in the wood to stop the paint soaking up. We gave that two coats, gave it a light sand in with about 600 grit sandpaper. Then we went with the metallic silver paint to give it like a base coat. I went for three coats of that, left about 10 minutes in between each coat, left it to fully dry for about an hour or so. Then we went over with this clear coat glitter paint to give it a really sparkly metallic finish. Again, three coats of that, left it to dry 10 minutes in between each coat. And then after about an hour, we went over with this crystal clear top coat. And yeah, I bit literally used the whole can. I think I put, got about four or five coats out of this. Really smothered it on. Let it dry for about three or four days. And it has come up nice and shiny, nice and smooth. I could go over some wet and dry paper, 1500, then 2000 grit to make it ultra shiny. At the moment, I quite like how it's come out anyway. It is smooth, there's no runs on it. It does have a nice sparkle to it. But if you want a super smooth finish, yeah, go over some wet and dry at the end. Just make sure the paint's fully dried. Uh, 1500, 2000 grit. And then once it's dried off, smoothed off, clean it all up. Get some car cotton compound and give it a really good buff. And you'll bring that shine back and make it really pop. But for me, I quite dig that. With spray paints, to get a really good finish, make sure you've got them up to room temperature. On the back there it will tell you the recommended temperatures just make sure you're doing it in a nice well ventilated warm room and if the paint's cold stick it in a warm bowl of water just get that paint nice and warm so it gives you a nice even coat and you get a really good finish and with the headstock i basically this comes as a square block i've got a jazz master headstock template shaped it out drew around it i went over with a jigsaw I gave, got a rough shape of it, left about half a centimetre all the way around. Then I went over with a Dremel just to finish it off and shape it. And I think that came out pretty well when I was painting the body. I also done exactly the same to the headstock. So we've got a nice sparkly finish to that. So before we start putting it all together, this kit was $109.99 from Gear for Music. It's Seattle Jazz. Comes with everything you need. You've got the vibrato, pretty much like the Squire one. You've got two P90 pickups. You've got the wiring kit which is all pre-wired. The only thing you've got to wire up is the pickup to the freeway selector switch and a ground wire from one of the pots to the, the bridge. We've got the tuners. I'm going to go with the stock strings on this one for now. We've got this tunematic bridge. Also got the vibrato arm and a guitar lead. We've got the neck plate, the strap buttons, all the screws there. So basically F in this kit is included. Also this red perloid pick guard. So what I'm going to do for this build, I'm just going to build it as is, all the stuff you get in the kit. I'm going to come back to it in a later video and maybe mod some bits on it to see how it plays first of all. And then if I think stuff needs upgrading, we'll sort that out after. Let's start putting it all together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put the wiring harness into the pick guard. So you've got a volume, tone pot, output jack, freeway selector switch. So you want to untangle it as best you can while you've got it all out. So you've got the nut and the washer, that's for the freeway selector switch, so we'll get that in. Just getting finger tight for now, 
just to get a, a rough gauge of where everything's going. And you can position this however you want it if you want it facing front to back or top to bottom. Personally, I'll probably go hmm, top to bottom on this one. But yeah, just do it finger tight for now. Don't really matter too much. Then you've got to work out which pot's what. So the one with the cap is the tone pot. The one without the cap is the volume pot. And then you've got the output jack. So I want the volume pot going in first. So you get one nut on there. First of all, you've got the... This comes with two nuts and a washer. So you're using one of the nuts as like a, a lock nut. Depending on how far you want it to stick through the body. So we'll get that in there. Probably a bit further down. Okay, then we get washer, nut. And we'll repeat that for the other two. So we've got the wiring in. Now you can tidy this up after if you like, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure all the wires are not tangling each other up and we're pretty good to go there. Right, so onto the soldering, we've got the neck pickup, bridge pickup. Now I'm going to have the switch facing that way is going to be the neck, that way is going to be the bridge. So for the neck this is going to be the heart, the bridge that's going to be the heart and then on the other side you've got a ground there which both the grounds go on to. Get a soldering iron up to temperature. And we do the same again for the bridge wire. That's them soldered together. So in a previous video I wasn't sure whether there was a ground wire for the bridge but yes there is all pre-wired so you've just got to feed that through the cavity in the body and I'll show you that in a second. So just inside the route in there there's a little hole feed that wire through so feed that through and that brings you out into the hole for the where the bridge goes. So the next thing we're going to do is screw down the pickups Make sure the wires are out of the way. You get four of these screws, they've got springs on the back, but you just need to put the little guide holes in just so you know where to screw these in. So I've got a little thin drill bit that is probably just under the width for the screw there. So just be careful when drilling through, you don't want to go all the way through the body, just uh, going to be a little guide hole. So just Going in a few millimetres, make sure you've got the pickups sort of lined up where you want them. Make sure all the edges line up, give it a good visual inspection, eyeball it, and then we'll go for it. So I've got to mention just before I drill the holes for them, I screwed the pit guard down with just a couple of screws just to make sure everything's all lined up before you start drilling them holes. So I'm going to take the pit guard off now and at this point I'm going to screw all these down, make sure everything's tight, all the wires tucked out of the way and then we'll go in and screw them pickups in. So just one thing to note, make sure you've got the pickups in the right position. One's marked with a B for the bridge and the other one's marked with an M for the next. So just make sure you get them correct first. So we've got the pit guard up now. Because these will fit through the pit guard and we've marked our holes up, I'm going to put them in now with the pit guard up. Okay, so we put our screws through the two holes in the top and get the springs underneath to tension the pickups down. And then we'll line them into our holes that we've pre drilled and screw them down. Right, so we've got them screwed down, so now you just want to tidy your wiring up. You can also cable tie it all together. I'm going to be taking this apart again very soon, so I'm just going to try and shove everything in there. But make sure you don't put any screws through your cables, or you'll have a very bad day. So all the pickups are screwed in. They all line up nicely. We'll adjust these a little bit later on, just to make sure we get the right height against the strings and what have you. Remember, we'll come back to this in shortly. 
So next up we're going to put in the vibrato, just make sure all the holes are lined up. Um, maybe what you want to do first of all is just put the screws sort of halfway in, just make sure everything's li lined up and then fully tighten them down. I normally do this with the pit guards anyway, so yeah, these are the screws for the vibrato. So vibrato's on, next job we're going to put in the tunematic bridge, you need to put these lugs in. These are going to be pressed in, so you're going to need a bit of a hammer. Then these screw in after, and the bridge sits on top. So first of all, we'll just do this side. Just give that a little tap with a hammer. Make sure you hit it nice and square. That's in. So for the next one we're coming back to this ground wire. Personally I'm going to strip a little bit more of the wire off with these wire strippers. Just to get a bit more of that internal exposed. Twist that round. So you want to feed this back through a bit. Just have to remove a few of these screws to pull this wire back through. Basically what you want is the exposed bit of wire just poking through the hole where the, the lug's going to go and so you've got a contact between the wire and the pole piece of the bridge. So you can just see a bit of wire sticking up there so I can just put that anywhere inside so when you hammer this one in you've got a nice contact. So, okay and just be careful when you're hitting hit it square on not to hit your pit guard. go that's in. <laughs> Next thing we need to do is screw these adjusters in. These adjust the, the height of your tunematic bridge and then screws face that way. Bridge done. Just going to put these screws back in and that's that part done. Right so next job we're going to check the electrics. Just going to put the, the volume and tone knob on. Yeah. Okay rewind. So I'm going to plug it in horrendous humming noise. Took it apart, the ground wire was missing from here. So maybe this wire is the ground for the output jack. Either way we still need the ground wire going to the bridge so that's the bridge one. I've just wired in this cloth wire straight from the second lug to the top of the volume pot. Job done. So the headstock, time to put the tuners on. So you get the tuners, you get the threaded nuts, you get the washer, you get the screws. Also got the string trees, but we'll come back to them once we've put the strings on. So first thing I'm going to do is put the tuner through. You've got them pre-drilled holes on the back to line the screws up. So what we do for now is just put a, a washer on. Then we put one of these bolts on. And do these hand tight for every tuner. And then we'll flip it over and then adjust using them screws on the back. Okay, so all the tuners are on. Now what you want to do is make sure the holes line up correctly with the pre-drilled holes on the back and then tighten them screws in. You can, again, loosen these up a little bit, give it a little bit more of a tweak if needed and that's pretty much tuners on. Okay, so time to put the neck on. Kind of a moment of truth with a pit guard on, so hopefully she'll fit okay. I have loosened these screws off just to make sure I've got a little bit of leeway if needed, but I don't know, it seems to be a good fit. Looking good. 
I'm just going to put another cloth under here just to protect this sort of stuff. Bit of buffering. Okay, out of the way. So the hardware is getting thin. You nearly got through it all. So in the set, you get four screws, a metal plate, these plastic plates which I don't like using. So we're just going to go for the the metal plate. All the holes are pre-drilled. So hopefully everything lines up. I don't like using power tools on neck pockets, so I will go sort of finger tight and use hand tools. Right, so there's going to be a bit of paint around these holes, so hopefully we'll go for okay. Cool. Don't force it, just let the screwdriver and screw do its thing. We should guide ourselves through. Let's get them so far in, and we'll just double check we've got the neck lined up right. And then we'll tighten them down fully. So there you go, the neck is on. So what I'll do now is I'll put the strings on, see how it sets up, hopefully we don't need to shim that neck. I'll be adjusting the string height using the tunematic bridge. I'll check the truss rod, at the minute it's perfectly straight so we should be okay with the truss rod. The tension of the strings should pull it all in but we shall see. So just to clarify for the purposes of straight out of the box what you get, I'm going to use the stock strings. I will come back to this guitar, do a bit of modding to it, and I'll use these Dear Dario XLs 9 to 46. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what the stock strings sound like and take it from there. Now, while I've been setting this up, I've been sort of planning my mind how to go about this because you've got two string trees. Okay. You've got one with a long bushing, one with a shorter bushing. Now, a lot of strats have two string trees. Um, a Jazzmaster generally just has one on the uh, B string and the high E string. Going across sort of in line with that second tuner. So for now, I'm going to go with that see how it goes if I get some sitar in on the G string I may put a second one in uh, possibly around about there but yeah I think I'm gonna go for that right so we got the drill bit got a bit of masking tape on gonna go about two thirds of the way another screw so when we get to that we know to stop drilling so we don't go through headstock so I'm gonna go bang in the middle of the B and the high E string about where the second tuner is. So. And we've got the string tree on. Sweet. Okay, so upon trying to set this guitar up, I've come to the realization it's going to need a neck shim. I can't get the action low enough. The lowest I can get it on the high E string is 1.75 millimeters, where I need about 1.25. So definitely going to need to take that neck off. We we'll get a little sliver of like a credit card, cut a strip off, put it at the back of the neck pocket, put the neck on it, and that should raise the angle up a bit so we can get that action lower. Also increases the tension and on the vibrato there, so it gives you just a, a better tuning stability as well. Also, I think I'm going to have to add that second string tree in. The G string is sitaring a little bit. When you strum it, it does like a like a spring vibrating noise. So I'm going to put that second string tree in, and I'll just quickly show you how to shim a neck. So what I find works for a neck shim: get a little bit of an old credit card, cut a sliver off, just avoid the raised bits with the numbers on. Make sure it's completely flat. Put that in the back of the neck pocket. Make sure you've got plenty of room to put your screws back through. Then put your neck back on, screw it in, and that will give you a bit more of a break angle. Just make sure it goes right in the back of that neck pocket there, so it make the neck go that way. 
top tip. So one of the last jobs, put the guitar straps on, so you've got the strap, the washer, and then the screw right through the middle of all that. And don't forget to cut down the excess strings. Just get some wire snippers, just be careful you don't cut your existing strings. Okay, so before I forget, the ultimate finishing touch. Yeah, I'll do. Music Seattle Jazz Guitar Kit. Now, quite an interesting build. Had a few problems along the way, but we managed to sort them all out. Um, in terms of the kit itself, 109.99. You get a lot of guitar for the money, and yeah, it's, a, it's a cool little modding platform. If you're new to guitars, it's good to sort of, you know, build a guitar just to give you an idea of all the insides of a guitar, how they work, that kind of thing. So it's nice to build them. Um, Personally, there was a lot of issues with it. One big flaw is the vibrato is not actually working. It feels like it's getting stuck inside. So that's something I'm going to have to come back to. Um, obviously, we had to shim the neck. Um, the nut is not the best nut. It's really high. That needs addressing. Probably going to buy a new nut for it. Um, so straight out of the box, you do need to spend a bit of money on it. Obviously, all the tools required. You do need quite a lot of tools. Paint work if you want to paint it, you know, there's plenty of ways you can go about it. You can just wood stain it, leave it a natural finish, just varnish it. But if you really want to go to town on it, get some grain filler. You know, there's so much you can do with them, but yeah, it's a pretty decent kit. $109.99. It's a good, yeah, it's a good guitar kit. Body's a bit light, but I quite like it. It sounds okay, it plays alright. Just a few little issues that we need to sort out, but yeah, for $109.99, pretty decent kit. So let me know what you think to it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Please like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, The Guitar Manifesto. And I'll catch you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Peace. Guitar Manifesto.